Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at some examples of using this definition we just made of the integral, the Darboux integral. So for the first one, so let's see, uh, say f of x is x squared, and um, we're integrating it on the interval 0b, okay? So of course we 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 know what we expect the answer to be, but we're trying to see how we can get there using the definition we just made, right? So um, consider p partition to be um, right. Well, okay. So. First, okay, let's give the formula here. So, um, so for, for a partition, sorry, P of zero B, we have um, that the upper sum of F on P is the sum from K equals one to N of M F T K or T K minus one T K uh, times T K minus T K minus one, right? And this maxima or the you know the supremum here just equals T K squared, right? Because T K minus one and T K are both non-negative. And x squared is increasing, so it actually achieves its maximum value. On this interval, the maximum value is just tk squared, right? So it achieves that when x equals tk. So this is the sum from k equals 1 to n of tk squared, tk minus tk minus 1. Okay? So let's see. Right. Suppose for some n, we choose p by setting tk equals kb over n, right? So this is like the equally spaced partition, equally spaced partition, right? Then ufp using our formula is the sum from k equals 1 to n of kb over n right. squared times kb over n minus k minus 1 b over n which is the sum from k equals 1 to n k let's say yeah k squared b squared over n squared times uh, and then we have 1 over n here yeah, the, or b over n sorry and so if we just factor out b over b cubed over n cubed we get b cubed over n cubed sum from k equals 1 to n of k squared and there's just a formula there, there's just a formula for the sum of of squares from 1 to n so we get b cubed over n cubed times um, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6, right? So, um, so u of f is less than or equal to b cubed over n cubed times n Oops, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6, uh, which tends to, as n approaches infinity, this tends to be cubed over 3, right? Because on top here, we have a cubic polynomial in n uh, whose highest de degree term is 2n cubed, right? So... 
So this is like, you know, asymptotically governed by 2n cubed on top, right? And then we have n cubed on the, in the denominator, 6n cubed in the denominator, right? So this is a pretty simple limit to evaluate. So as n approaches the infinity, this is b cubed over 3. So u of f should be less than or equal to b cubed over 3. So u of f is less than or equal to b cubed over 3, right? Because u of f is the infimum of all of the um, u of f p, right? So it's like, well, all we're doing is it's just, we know a very, we know like a special sequence of partitions that we're sure is going to make u of f p approach the correct value. So by using that special sequence of partitions, we can like sort of find the correct value and show that like u of f is less than or equal to that value. Uh, and then similarly, right? So, so similarly, um, L of FP equals like the sum for L of FP, you end up using the left endpoint because that's the smallest value on the integral on the interval, sorry, the sub intervals. So we have the sum from k equals n, or k equals one to n of, so the left endpoint is k minus one squared b squared, sorry, k minus one squared b squared over n squared. Um, and then again, we have b over n here. And this one is, uh, so we have b cubed over n cubed, sum of k minus one squared from k equals one to n. And of course, this is the same thing as the sum from k equals one to n of, or to n minus one of k squared, right? Because um, uh, because uh, the first term is zero, so uh, so we can eliminate the first term and then like shift all the indices. Uh, so this is so this this is like whatever you get by putting in n minus one. So this is like n minus one times n times 2n minus 1 over 6. So overall, we have b cubed over n cubed uh, times n minus 1 and 2n minus 1 over 6. So L of f is greater than or equal to b cubed over n cubed times n minus 1 and 2n minus 1 over six, and then this tends, as n goes to infinity, to, um, again, b cubed over three. So L of f is greater than or equal to b cubed over three. Uh, but then, since, well, let's see. Yeah. So, yeah, from this, so we can conclude that L of f equals U of f. Um, so, okay. Well, all right. Okay. This is, this relies on, okay. So we haven't proved this yet. We will soon show that L of F is always less than or equal to U of F. Um, okay, so any, any bounded function on any interval you always have that L of F is less than or equal to U of F. This is not actually obvious from what we've done so far. Uh, and I'll explain more about that when we get to proving it. But so, um, so since L of F is greater than or equal to B cubed over three and U of F is less than or equal to B cubed over three in this case, for example, um, f of x equals x squared is integrable on 0b. And as we expected, the integral from 0 to b of f, sorry, let me make that f look a little bit 
better. So this equals b cubed over three, okay? Because L of f, this, this implies that L of f is greater than or equal to U of f, but we already know that L of f is less than or equal to U of f, so they have to be equal, right? And uh, in particular, they have to equal this common uh, bound here. Okay, so um, that's, a, that's an example of an integrable function. Real quick, let's also look at an example of a non-integrable function. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So one for X in the rational numbers and zero if X is not rational, right? Um, on some interval a, b. Uh, then for any t, k, t, k minus 1, t, k, a subset of a, b, right, um, with t, k minus 1 less than, or less than, strictly less than t, k, right? We never allow for t, k minus 1 to equal t, k. Uh, then um, the capital M upper, you know, the, the upper value of F on this interval is one and the lower value of F is zero. So for any P, um, U of F P equals the sum from K equals one to N of just one times T K minus T K minus one, right? And this sum obviously is just the length of the interval. So you get B minus A, um, which is greater than zero. And it, so we're assuming that A is strictly less than B, right? And then L of F P equals the sum from k equals 1 to n of 0 times tk, sorry, minus tk minus 1. Uh, so that's just 0. So um, u of f equals b minus a, which is not equal to l of f, which is 0, right? So f is not integrable. Okay, so this is a classic example of a function which is not integrable on a, an interval. And um, yeah, uh, so in the next video, um, we are going to start proving some theorems which let us actually, you know, like for example, so we're going to make progress towards uh, well, we will we will prove that uh, this is true, or what we'll yeah we'll we'll make progress towards this. Okay, this fact that L of f is less than or equal to U of f. This is an important and very useful thing about um, upper and lower sums. And like I said, it, it's a little bit it's a little bit non-trivial. So anyway, um, yeah. See you in the next video.